there's something you don't see every day. So we are at GT Ryuki Sports out here in Saitama and basically um, we're here to shoot a couple of cars for um, the owner because they will be soon sold and they have an amazing lineup of rides starting off of course with the GTR 50 we just saw there there's a nice selection of R35 GTRs out here I do like this uh, Bayside Blue on the BBS LMs here this is really sick. These uh, wheels always end up looking good pretty much any car, especially when they have a lot of lip like the back ones here. Super sweet ride. There's a nice R33 GTR. Again, another car on the BBS LMs. Nismo trim, Nismo carbon spoiler, and a 400R style hood. Next to it, all the people will lose their mind, but this is indeed a Mugen Double R. This is something you don't see very often this is a true collectible when it comes to hondas came out back in 2006 or 7. i remember actually getting a press car for mugen back in the day and taking this out to the hakone turnpike fun little car and it looks sensational in red and it's all parked next to this monster sport evo 10. It looks like a potential x demo car that they picked up and uh, there's more goodness to be checked out inside so we're gonna go inside through the main shop entrance here and take a look at what we can definitely call a bit of a treasure here check this out beautiful white r32 gtr here and next to it a midnight purple 3 r34 A Tommy Mackinnon Evo 6, an M Spec Nur. This is actually the car we'll be shooting today. And next there is a Mines demo car. And the crazy thing about this car is that it shows one kilometer on the odometer. I'm not quite sure why, we'll find out, but I think it must have had a very fresh engine just dropped into it. I believe this is actually one of the very few Nismo R4 engined R34s. This car must be worth an insane amount of money and rightly so, this is as rare as it gets. Low mileage, m -spec Nur, built by Nismo and also some Mines bits you can see here. It has the Mines color matched trunk spoiler, the Mines carbon fiber lip that has a built-in gurney flap and the Mines logo there all the legit stickers even works auto alarm and if you look inside it's been fully retrimmed by robson leather and it even has a suede alcantara dash carbon fiber steering wheel carbon fiber center console this is literally the r34 dream and up front it's got a z tune bumper a color matched OEM diffuser, the R-Tune carbon fiber hood, and the Z-Tune aero fenders here that kind of flare out outwards to create that uh, exhaust of hot air from the engine bay. Mines mirrors, Nismo side skirts, Nismo rear skirt finishers, and the rear over fenders for the shock in so that they can uh, run slightly more aggressive offset on the Nismo wheels. Oh yeah, and the Nismo wheels of course, LMGT4s, R35 brake package front and back. <laughs> this is insane. Whoever picks up this car is gonna be one lucky chap. Wow. So just as I was saying a second ago, this is indeed the car that was on display. Wow. Ah. So not only is it an R4 engine, but it has a one-off custom requested coloring to that crackle finish on the cam covers. Wow, carbon piping, carbon air box, all the good bits, absolutely insane. So as you can see, this car was finished in September 2023. It's got a chassis refresh from Omori factory and an R4 engine. This is one of the very first few cars to get a complete R3 engine fitted. 
well. And yeah, a midnight purple three right behind it. I'm just blown away. How do I get myself into these shops every time? Oh, absolutely incredible. Okay, so we're actually just gonna shoot the car in the little alleyway in front of the shop. And that's mainly because, I mean, the thing has one kilometer on the odometer since the R4 engine has been fitted. So definitely don't wanna jeopardize that number. And they're taking care not to screw anything up, but uh, wow, what a sight. Like the procedure not to scratch or damage anything. I have to say, uh, with the R4 turbos, it is a slightly deeper idle sound. Still has a smoothness about it. I mean, at the end of the day, Nismo engines are not that extreme. They're all catered towards, you know, creating the best setup for the road. But, um, yeah, even the Tommy Mackin in here. Of course, Ryuki is getting well known here in Japan for being able to source some of the rarest cars out there with a lot of uh, attention on GTRs. I mean, um, as you've seen outside and inside. You know what, we really have to take a look at this because this is something you don't see every day. Can you see that? That's one kilometer on the odometer. One kilometer. So that's what you get when you do a chassis refresh with a brand new engine from Nismo. They reset your car to zero. Now that it's out in the open, we can actually take a closer look at the interior, that Robson leather and Alcantara retrim just really transforms the cabin into something very special. Even the headliner is done, carbon fiber trim for the center dome light, and the map reading lights, the mirrors, the center console, the HVAC control, the vents, the steering wheel, more vent trims here, the door, Plastics have all been carbon fibered. It's insane. It really is insane. This is as much as you can possibly do to an R34, and that goes right across to the back. All right, so we're just going to reposition it in the center here. Here's that Mines demo car that they pulled out. I think I may actually have driven this if it's the original one back when they first built it, what, like six, seven years ago now? It actually runs the evolution of the T37s that um, came out maybe five, six years ago. I have the actual drilled out spokes and also scooped out inner spokes for weight reduction. But oh my God, this thing next to it. Oh jeez, this is insane. Etel Design built Nissan Skyline GTR50. So the thing with this car, um, if you don't know, it was basically a celebration of the 50 years of the, G um, of the GTR and it was designed by Nissan's design studio in London and then uh, they commissioned the build at Ital Design in uh, Torino who took care of basically roof chopping the Nismo GTR that it's based on so I think it's based on a 2019 uh, Nismo GTR and then redoing all the, the bodywork and the custom headlights and while it does look significantly different from the front, it's the back that really hits quite hard because it is one hell of a conversion and it looks really mean at night. Like they've actually found a way to make the afterburner tail lights even cooler. They're literally like floating in the air, like separate from the rest of the bodywork. There's a kind of like a air outlet there behind them and they're all, you know, empty in the middle. And they have down facing exhausts over here on the 
diffuser setup. And I do love the movable wing here and struts that actuate according to the speed. And I guess you have a setting inside as well. But you know, we're actually shooting this tonight. So we'll get some more clips in there. I think we need to really dive into this engine bay a little bit more. There's actually so much happening here, starting with brand new washer bottles and coolant um, overflow tanks, Nismo radiator and also a Nismo intercooler. You can see under here, that's all plumbed into place with Nismo carbon fiber intercooler piping set, the carbon fiber inlet pipes, the carbon fiber air box. There's a Nismo titanium strut brace. Looks like all in dampers and that centerpiece there, the Nismo R4, which like I was mentioning before, has a custom one-off uh, color, which kind of matches the body color of the M spec NUR. And you can see there, serial number 1069, Omori factory type R4. Over here, there's another Omori factory plaque. So it shows that the car was uh, completed in September, 2023. Chassis refresh, engine R4. And then over here, we have the GT plenum, finished off in the same finish as the engine. All brand new piping, rubbers, clips, you name it. It's all been replaced and refreshed. Up here on the said tune bumper grill, there's the Hakoska GTR badge at an angle. And curiously enough, this is one of the very few R-Tune carbon bonnets that I've seen painted on the inside as well. And that goes right onto the optional air scoop that uh, rivets on to the actual R-Tune hood, which basically scoops up air from the little gap here left over by the radiator shroud. Again, an Omori factory piece and basically makes it kind of go in here with a bit of a ram air effect at speed. Obviously not too great, but still a very nice engineering solution to what is a dream Nismo engine bay. One little detail here again, so the carbon fiber z -tune fenders actually are very functional pieces because they have uh, seven oval intakes along the entire edge, which basically helps scoop up hot air from the engine bay and dump it through this little vein here. So this is a solution that was actually engineered for uh, GT cars or actually JGTC cars in the early, sorry, late nineties. And that ended up making its way into cars like the Z-Tune. parts I spotted are the mines trunk lip spoiler. This has been color matched to the M spec nor color that goes along with another mines piece here, the carbon fiber blade, which is actually not painted in their uh, kind of like greenish bluish clear coat tint. It's actually been left transparent, has the mines logo there, integrated gurney flap. Moving down here, we have a Nismo titanium Wildina exhaust system which is titanium all the way through. And then of course, LMGT4s front and back, shot in Bridgestone Potenza RE71. Rainbow brakes from the R35 GTR. And they have gone for Bridgestone Potenza RE71 RSs, which is kind of a half street, half track compound, kind of like a Yokohama Niova 8009R. And uh, yeah, what a, an amazing build. We really need to dive inside for some more Robson leather awesomeness starting off with the door trims. So these are all being given the same Alcantara suede treatment, even the lower portion of the door. You got some stitches around the little door pocket here, right across here on top of the speakers. We have carbon fiber trim around the doors, the light switch, the uh, window switch panel, even the backing to the mine's mirrors, the venting, steering wheel, the rear view mirror, the rear view mirror holder and the lights. 
let's check that interior from the passenger side. You get a nice look at the leather seats. Very tight job from Robson Leather here on the seats. And so Robson Leather actually has the official okay from Nissan to use the GTR logo. And this is an option obviously that you can add the Robson Leather logo into uh, the center bolsters there. There's also the carbon fiber treatment to the seat belt pass-throughs. And of course, it just goes right across the entire center console. Smartly, they didn't do the MFD cover because that would just create horrible reflections on the windshield. And yeah, it's just a, a really amazing way to up the quality of an R34. It just adds so much goodness into a cabin that was pretty drab and cheap originally from Nissan. As you can see from the actual key here, there's a, an alarm system that was actually installed by Works Auto Alarm. That is the shop that did my DRL conversion to my R34 back in the day. So good to see their work also on this car. actually got to have a look at the TME engine bay. Pretty um, basic mods, I think. Uh, I see a Rally Art piping kit that was uh, anodized in red that came from Rally Art like that. Of course, that's something that over time always ends up discoloring and probably something that the next owner will probably look into as an Apex filter kit. A bit of a divider here to keep the air separated from the hot side of the engine to the intake itself. There's a CBA headlight igniter system because this car actually runs aftermarket headlights and ARC turbo heat shield, Cusco strut brace. And now the M-Spec Neuro is coming back inside. So you get to hear some uh, Nismo R4 goodness through a uh, Nismo Weldina exhaust. You can see this car also has the GT LED lights from Nismo, as well as custom reverse and fog LED lights. But as we walk past the Midnight Purple 3 and the white R32, there's actually a little curtained off area here, which if you make space for yourself, you can actually find a few more cars parked here. I guess this is the Honda section, starting with a S2000 Type S in blue and a DC2 Integra Type R with a Mugen spoiler. So all the good bits hiding away here. Special, special cars with special parts. It actually runs CE28Ns. The last car that needs to be reversed back into space is the Mines X demo car. You can see it even has the carbon Kevlar Recaro bucket seats. All the Mooncraft built carbon bits. Interesting treasures here at Ryuki. And I think we're gonna go upstairs and check out the shop. I definitely want to get a start up with this car from the back. Etel Design GTR 50. <laughs> frequency on the outer rings <clears throat> but yeah I mean it is all looks it's based on a GTR uh, Nismo 2019 and there's no mods mechanically it's just the body conversion which fair enough has transformed this car into one of those really rare and very expensive collectibles that just keep on going up on value this is probably worth 1.5 million if not more car is actually just being wrapped in Expel PPF clear protection film. A job that took a couple of weeks to do, but it's a must on something like this to just keep it protected. But we will be talking about this car on a separate video because it really does deserve its own little episode. Okay, so we are up in the office area and surprisingly enough, there's actually a ton of cool stuff to look at up here, <laughs> starting off with a 
crate RB26. Some uh, goodies. Of course, everything is GTR related. You got some uh, Olins and some uh, R35 front calipers, six spots, and a ton of wheels. And believe it or not, actually, Ryuki has actually collaborated with Rays to create their own bespoke version of the GT090, which is this wheel here we were looking at outside with the kind of machined out openings on the spokes. So there's four different colors, light silver, slightly darker silver, the gold, and the matte black. So these are limited edition collaboration wheels for the R35 GTR sold in 20 inch, 10J and 11J. Some more Nismo goodies here. This is the original late 90s, mid to late 90s titanium strut brace that was out of production for a while because titanium prices uh, kind of skyrocketed back in early 2000s. And then it ended up coming back uh, as a remake that we saw down on the R34 M Spectner with the three uh, openings there. This is the Mines version of that same kind of design. And then over here we have a few exhaust systems and piping and that Recaro bucket seats everybody likes to run here in Japan. Nice little lounge area here with a couple of Yokohama Advan GTs. A V-Spec 2 hood, of course, made in carbon fiber. A couple of more rare stuff. Of course, R34 seats are very, very expensive these days, especially when they're wrapped in leather like this. GTR emblem and the Nismo. And over here, there's a, an entire front end and side to a Nismo GTR, including the trunk lip spoiler or rather GT wing.